Hi everybody, Brian Balrick with Roland DGA in Irvine, California, here with another short video. Today's topic is designing for uh, UV printing and especially with special effects. So special effects are something unique uh, to the UV line. We have a UV gloss ink and we have a UV white ink and we also have a UV primer. So I wanted to briefly touch on those three specialty inks and what we need to do to prepare for using those inks, okay? So looking at the screen, I've got uh, Adobe Illustrator open and running. I've got a design on the screen. And uh, as you can see, CMYK color all looks good. Um, the designer did include a layer. So you can see over here, I've got the layers open and I'm gonna turn on the gloss layer. And in this case, it's the entirety of the outer boundary of every object. That's the top logo, the center text, and the lower bar, all with a fill. And uh, as you can see, it's been designed with a blue. The color isn't important, but I will show you what is important. So looking over here to your right, we're gonna go to the swatch library. And you can see here that the blue, if I hover over it, is this specialty color that uh, Roland reserves for its uh, specialty inks. So in this case, it's RDG and underscore gloss. All of it capitalized. Um, it has to be named. So I'm gonna double click on that real quick so we can just highlight it. So you can see it's RDG underscore gloss. It has been selected as a spot color. So, and again, this color, it could literally be anything you choose. That's not important. The name is everything. So. Say okay. So in this design, if I were to save it as it is right now, what we would have is the original design. Let's go back to layers and turn on the original, which is the CMYK. And we have a secondary layer. If I turn both of these on and now go file, save, that's the design in its entirety. I've got color and I've got gloss set up, ready to be released in those areas that I've chosen. A couple quick tidbits. I can also just select any part of this. Let's say this top section here, I can go up to fill and you'll notice here's our fill color here again. It's been designed as RDG underscore gloss, but notice the opacity is set for 100. Real simple, I can take that and I can cut it back to 50, 20. So let's do it for the fill. I had it set for the outline, so for the fill I'll take it back and we'll just do 50. So you can see um, it's cut the total amount. So that's gonna translate when we go to print. If we want to cut back on the amount of ink we're gonna throw onto the object, you can do that here very effectively. Take it way down, very light misting of the of the gloss ink, or the full amount, 100%. So just good to know. But we're not done. So there's several other specialty colors. So there's our gloss. Let's say that in this case, I know for a fact this is printing onto a wood. And in this case, the wood object is very oily. The wood is just one of those types of wood that out, it has a bunch of oil on it. So the only way that we found that we can cut into that is to use the other specialty uh, ink we have. Um, it's called primer. Just as, you, just as it sounds, it primes the surface. If we jet that down, it gives us more bite. It gives us something to latch onto where the ink, it, the ink will bond tighter. If we didn't have the primer and we tried to get our CMYK inks directly onto this oily wood, sadly, there's not enough surface uh, adhesion and it will release the ink and you get bad adhesion and the ink won't stick. So to increase it, one of the options is to use our machines and include the primer. That's specifically on the LEC2300 has that option. Or I'm sorry, LEF, the LEF2300. So real quick, let's take a look. We've already got, we're fortunate, we have this design set up. We've got this uh, this layer set up and it's got the items that we want. So I'm just going to highlight here into the layers. I've turned off the CMYK layer. I only have the gloss layer. So I'm going to simply control A for control all and then control C, which is to copy those objects. I'm going to create a new layer. And this is the recommended process for utilizing um, our specialty inks is trying to get them separated into their uh, unique layers. That way you can easily sift through them, turn them on and off and the rip will actually take those as they are in layers and, and as long as they're turned on, they'll come through. So let's take a look here. We'll call this primer layer. And then for color, it's not important. This will be fine. So there, we have a new layer sitting right on top. It's called primer. 
So I'm going to turn the gloss layer off. We've already copied the data from the gloss layer. I'm going to turn the lower layer back on and I'm going to paste. And now we've got this, uh, it's a, just a repeat. I've copied and pasted the gloss into the primer layer. But what we need to do now is go up to our colors and swatches. And I've predefined this particular yellow with, as you'd expect, another specialty named color. So I'll double click. So you see here it's RDG underscore primer, all capitals, all one word with a underscore in between. Spot color is the designation. So we'll say OK. And you see it's taken on that color for the fill. And now we're just going to pull it away. And I'm going to pull it back and hopefully it'll snap right back where it needs to be. Just about like that. If it's a little off, I'm going to drag it down just using my down arrow key. And I might zoom in to get a real tight fix on this. Make sure it's covering up everything. So you see I'm making it go left and right until we're happy with how it looks. There. So I'll zoom back out here. Click off. Go back to layers. And I'll turn off the primer. So there you go. You get the idea. Uh, I've taken any object that you see on the screen. You can copy and paste. I particularly like to put a new layer on. We've added a gloss layer and then we've added a primer layer. And we can keep going, but in this case we've done enough. Um, let's go ahead and take this as it is. We're just going to minimize this and we're going to go into VersaWorks where I've got the job already loaded. Uh, Prior to, I actually added in another layer to it, so it's got all the specialty colors. So let's take a look. So we've got the wood coaster loaded. You can see a small representation here. And if you carry down, this is where the, the key component is. Special items indicates WH, that's our white ink. If I hover, you can see the white ink come up. GL, hover over that, we have gloss ink. And guess what? Third one, we have primer. So this one job has all three of our specialty colors. So let's go ahead and, and make this work for our job. I'm going to double click on the job here, bring it open. Right away, we, as I mentioned, primers are unique in a sense they only do one thing. Uh, they're preparing the surface. So we need to do that first. So I'm going to change my media type and I go under generic and I'm going to move that to primer. And notice the screen's updated. And in this case, the visual verification that uh, our VersaWorks uses is this kind of a light tone of a green. So it might be hard for you to see, but there it is. Basically, everywhere on my design that I had thrown that spot color now shows up as a primer. But remember, you have to change off of generic for UV printing. So we just take this off of generic and go back to primer. We're good to go. So there's your primer. Primers are cool. Um, there's not a real key need to drive these really high quality so we can let it go with standard bi-directional and we're good so there's our first hit so I'm going to use another uh, often used trick that I have so you click on the uh, job as it sits in the queue down below you're going to see and hover right about the midpoint at the lower area you see save and I'm going to choose my desktop and I'm just going to give it a shorter name let's call it wood underscore like that and say save all right, so there's my file. If I drag it back into the queue, uh, I've shown this in other videos. It's really this, it, it's the same data from the first job. It's just been stored. So now we've brought it back in and it resides as, as another separate job. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Beautiful part is it carried in every setting, including the fact that it had previously been set for primer. So now all I have to do is click on primer. And we're ready for the first layer, which is going to be, in this case, just the CMYK. Or, if I want, I can change the mode and say white and CMYK. And you'll notice that the design changes slightly. Let me show you where the white resides just so you get an idea. So the designer in this case did a wonderful job of creating what is a knockout right in the dead center of this upper logo. So clearly he wants the wood to come through on this design and, and to give you another visual uh, you know, where it visually d designates that center section is a wood if just showing the wood through. So no ink's going to be laid there for this, for this part. White only goes around the outer edge, then under the logo and under the bar at the bottom. But if I go back to white underlaying the color which goes on top and combine the two, you'll see it appear like this. 
So in this, you know, it, it just need to note that underneath the center section, it's clear. It's letting the wood. So you're getting this yellow effect of ink, yellow ink on top of the wood with no white underneath it. But on the outer portions, he's added the white. So it blocks up and it makes that color really pop. So it's fun to play with these effects. I mean, if we had printed this on like a clear, um, that yellow ink center, if there was any kind of a backlighting, and since there's no white to block it, the yellow would kind of illuminate and it would take on an illuminated effect like a stained glass window would, um, again on a clear. But we're going on wood. He wants that effect, but in this case, he wants the wood grain to show through the yellow ink. It's kind of smart because yellow can do that. It's, it's a very light tone ink and it'll take on that effect. Elsewhere, you know, we've got pure white showing through around the king snake. Really neat design here. So there you go. We've started with primer. I'm going to release this one, let's say high quality white CMYK bidirectional spine. And in this case, just another tip, I'm going to, I want the color to really be as rich as I can. I'm going to move it to true rich color. All right. So we've got all these selected. We've done the primer. White and CMYK is ready to go. We have one more to go. Say OK. And, you know, I already saved this job to the desktop, so easy enough. I'm going to drag it in one more time. So we've got our jobs queuing up. We have a third one. And in this case, just as you'd expect, I'm going to go right here to the media type, and we're going to move it to special effect. That's our gloss. So uh, with this one file, it's pretty, pretty amazing. We've got these three items ready to be, be produced. Our choices would be to either do a gloss varnish, that's a very fast, usually a quick hit, and just to pop the areas where the ink lands with a gloss effect. Um, it's a beautiful effect. Um, we'll go down here to matte varnish. Again, it's still going to jet the gloss ink, but it does it in a way that it almost looks crystallized. It, 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 it has a rough texturing to it. And it's a beautiful effect in the sense that, especially if you see the two juxtaposed in the same area on a design, you get this wonderful play of light being reflected where you see that it's shiny and then you see an area where it's been pulled away. Like literally it's soaking up the reflection, yet it still has a luster to it. So these are fantastic to play with. You get some really good effects. Um, moving down from there, we have uh, just a matte varnish with a higher number of passes to really tighten it up to give it very precise location on the design. In this case, it actually might benefit from, if you take a look, we're hitting these areas that are super small. Uh, these little leaflets here in the design, uh, they could be as small as a couple, three pixels wide. So when you're talking about holding ink to drop in these teeny tiny areas, you might increase the number of passes and that'll help. And last but not least, one of my favorites, I think a lot of people, embossing. The trick with embossing is it is done in such a way that we are throwing the ink down and instead of just doing a quick hit, a single hit, uh, we actually want it to start having a tactile, a touch effect. So if you can imagine, we start with flat and we start laying the, the, the gloss down. And if we start throwing the gloss repeatedly, the specific effect of embossing indicates we want to build. We want to grow the gloss ink up off the surface till the point where we can actually feel it. How cool is that? So to get that effect to take full control of it, you need to utilize this with another tool. As we go further down, we're going to go into the printer controls, uh, which is the wrench symbol midway down on your left. We're going to go change this custom settings at the top See where it says overprint? Just as you'd imagine, it's how many times do we want to release the ink on the exact same location that's seen on the screen. So looking at this, you know, what he's done is the designers highlighting very specific regions on this King Snake logo. And he's obviously doing that so that it, instead of laying the gloss everywhere and just creating what would be like a dome, which is another fun effect for sure, but in this case, he wants to create ridging. He wants it to almost look like it's been embroidered, where the color and everything that's laying under this gloss looks like it has a, 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 a raised effect off of the surface. It's very cool. So to get that effect, anywhere past the level three hits of ink, 
you move into four, five, and six, you really, yeah, that'll definitely, you'll definitely feel it as you run your fingers across it. You'll see a change in the surface and it'll look raised. Now you get into these higher numbers, very usable. You know, I've gone as high as like nine and 10, depending on the job. When you get up into the 15, you have to be careful. Anything past 10 uh, on an LEF machine, you're always trying to, to get your print heads close to the surface. Well, in this case, you're laying down so much gloss ink and you're stacking it. You're creating this bridge or, or tower of ink coming up off. If you go too high, it might endanger and actually come into contact with the moving print head because you've closed that gap. The, the, the ink is actually raised up so much that it creates a danger. So be cautious. So like I said, you're fine anywhere in the five, six, seven range, but getting closer up to 10 and beyond that, you're gonna have to be very careful. And you very simply, the way around it is you, when you set up the job and you, you choose where your print head goes, just give it more room. Uh, you'll have to go a little slower, uh, but it'll work. We actually have a unique application for ADA, America's, Americans with Disabilities Act. ADA signage requires these raised dots that are tactile enough that a blind person can actually run their fingers over that and read uh, using those those dots of, of in this case of build up of glass ink and we're one of the few manufacturers that have that ability to do that with our LEF series and they are uh, certified as a you know usable ADA this is how you achieve that um, so we have that ability as well but in this case it's just for you know for the design aspect of this I'm going to hit it with five I'm going to go back to the quality control. The trick with embossing, you really do need to release it at high quality. Um, you don't have to understand. You could go standard and save. I mean, we're saving a substantial amount of time doing it uh, standard mode. The trade-off, you know, I, I asked for five hits. If you release the five hits at high quality, unidirectional, you will get some really amazing results. Anything less than this, if I start, let's say, going high quality by dye, it won't be quite as high. And the reason is, anytime we're trying to in increase the speed where it's done quicker, it's having to do things quicker. And frankly, to get a beautiful raise up of ink properly, it needs to be done methodically, controlled, and a little slower. So if you have the time, go to high quality, go to unidirectional. It'll build up better and it'll be more concise, it'll lay, it'll lay exactly where it's supposed to lay and look perfect. So let's say okay. And that is it. Uh, we have a design that has a primer layer, as you can see on the screen. We have the design set up for the color layer with white, doing both on that particular job. And the last one is the gloss layer. Uh, very simply, if you wanted to output these you know, uh, sequentially without having to you know, be in attendance, I could very simply select the first job, hold the shift key on your keyboard, click on the last job, and go right down to the bottom where the print icon is, hit print. The machine, if it's set up to do a continuous run, uh, which is user settable, or it's a user setting that you control, as long as it's set for that, no one has to attend this. It will literally jump through all three of these one after the other and you'll walk back to the machine when it's done and you'll have your complete item. I hope this has been helpful uh, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Thank you.